good morning, good afternoon, good night. Whatever time you're watching this, as always, thanks for watching Common Sense Fishing. So today's video is going to be all about the jigs. It's going to be about jig tips, tricks, modifications, and we're going to show you some of the biggest bass I've ever caught on a jig. So follow me. I've got a bunch of jigs laid out on the boat deck here, and we're going to show you guys some cool stuff. So don't forget to smash that subscribe and like. And before we get moving on, I'd just like to let everyone know we do live streams on this channel Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, sometimes six, but usually seven o'clock to nine o'clock at night. And those days sometimes float and fluctuate depending on uh, what's going on in life, but come check the channel and thanks for watching all right folks this is my latest order of jigs that i just picked up from b Zhang, also known as bumblebee jigs go ahead and check him out on facebook um, but yeah i had him make me a bunch of different custom jigs we'll show you guys the coloring some of my favorite colors we'll show you what i caught my pb or one of my pbs on uh, a 10 pound i think six ounce largemouth bass and uh it came on this peanut butter and jelly color right here. Just a beautiful color head with that just perfect skirt. Gotta love it. And we'll talk more about that in a bit. We've got June bug and black, dark colors, purples. Those are usually going to be my nighttime lures or super dirty water. And with uh, the winter here and with all this incoming water the lakes are dirtying up dark colors can be key as well as colors like this so you're fishing dark dirty water this is an awesome color i have some greens made just to replicate some gobies because uh, that's what a lot of the bass are eating right now sculpin so that green green and brown color is really key as well right now at the lakes i've got some that are more representative of an actual live craw. Also could call it a bluegill coloring. Um, we've got some pretty unique different skirts here, as you can see. All right, folks, we're gonna talk about trailers. And I've also got some surprise trailers you may not have thought about. But in the meantime, we're gonna go over kind of the obvious ones, but we're gonna go over my favorites. Now we're gonna show you what trailers I'd match with what jigs. And before we get to that, leave a comment below if anybody noticed something kind of special, different, or secretive about the jigs that I just showed you. There's one particular feature about the jigs that I fish primarily. Try to remember I'm here in California. Most of the lakes that I fish are muddy or rocky and uh, mostly rock, not a lot of wood and vegetation. So if you uh, caught on to what that is, leave a comment below. And by the end of the video, I'll let you guys know and we'll see how many people got it right. So let's get to these trailers and some of these awesome modifications. All right, folks, one of my favorite baits to throw on a jig as a trailer is going to be a missile bait D-bomb. Now I prefer, if I'm fishing where I know there's just giants, if I'm trying to eliminate the bigger from the smaller fish, I'll usually throw a little bit bigger of a trailer. Um, so I'll throw the D-bomb, but my preferred weapon of choice is the baby D-bomb. And that color, candy grass, is my favorite one to throw. So that bag right there are the full size, and these are the babies. And I want you to notice that my bait comes out of the bag extremely, this is an old bag, but a little bit slimy. I usually put some spray in there to uh, make these guys be particularly stinky. So this is one of my favorites. <coughs> Excuse me. And I'd pair this up with any one of these peanut butter and jelly jigs. It would just match perfect or with any of my green. So this purple on one side, green on the other, would be matched with any one of, say, these jigs right here or any one of these jigs, the greenish jigs and my purplish jigs. One of my other favorite trailers to throw is a KVD rodent. And you take here and break the arms apart so that you have a little more action 
a little separate action and it's a little more subtle. If you leave them together, it, this actually stays together and it's almost like a big uh, singular tail and it, make, it makes more uh, movement. I've seen it underwater. If you leave these together, it's actually like a, a big chatterbait like type of bill that you know moves, thumps a lot. When it's split up, it's much less vibration actually. So just depends on what you're going for. So remember that when you break these open, what you're trying to achieve. <clears throat> Plus, I think it's just more realistic. And also another little tip is you can shorten this down to whatever size you want. So say this is a little big for me, then I'm going to remove it, say right here. And go just like that. And yes, I bit it off. <laughs> and again, I'd pair this with any one of the brown or green. <clears throat> now this Guggen bait, the Okeechobee Craw Bandito Bug is a great lure to throw as a uh, trailer. But as always, I like to use the smaller versions for the trailer. So this is the Bandito Bug Junior. And this is what I would prefer to throw on this over the larger version. This is a Crazy Legs Chigger Craw. I'll use this with any one of my black and purple ones to fish at night. Now, I want to show you guys a really cool modification to do to this. So stick around. All right, guys and gals, I've got a really cool modification for you guys here. So we've got a Crazy Legs Chigger Craw and we've got a black and blue jig. I'm going to match it up and put it where I think I, I where I think it needs to be and we'll show you guys how I do that. I'm going to show you our little modification here in a second. So what I'm going to do is take the jig and remove, don't remove the skirt, but hold the jig upside down. Let the skirt dangle like this, right? So now you've got just a hook. Then what I'm going to do is take and see where my hook would go if I just left it as is. So what I want to do with this one is I want to remove oh about two segments and we'll show you guys here. So I'm just going to bite that off. I tried to leave those legs and I succeeded. Sweet. So I left the back legs. We got this down into a much smaller man manageable piece. Because I don't want so much of it dangling out past the hook where I don't want to get short strikes. It's annoying as heck to get short strikes. So here's how I'm going to put this on. Ooh, I'm going to get it right in the middle. We're going to feed it down until right, right above the eyes. Right here. So like I said, you're going to let the jig dangle upside down. Grab it right here so that you just have the hook. Feed it through and then slide it up. And uh, that way I don't have too much. So we'll show you guys. That way I don't have too much of the trailer sticking down past this hook. There are these long appendage arms, sure, but the bulk of the trailer, the big arms and stuff, they're pretty close to where this hook is at. So this is not going to take up too much room. It's got a lot of action. Now, what modification was I talking about? So this is just a basic jig here. Now, at the beginning of the video, I asked you, did you catch anything about the particular jigs that I have? One little secret about the jigs that I fish in my area, and if the lakes that you fish are like mine, if they're like McClure, Pedro, New Maloney's, well, Maloney's is a little different. It just depends on water level. If you don't have a lot of wood or vegetation in your lake, you know, a lot of rocks and a lot of main lake points and places that these bass hang out on, and there's not a ton of cover or structure, then why does your jig need a weed guard? So this is a very sharp hook and I have no weed guard. So I like to fish jigs with no weed guard. Now I'll order jigs. I got some we're going to show you in a minute that have weed guards on them. I like to fish G-Money jigs. They're pretty decent jigs. 
um, good manufacturer. So I have some G Money jigs that I use that do have the weed guard and we'll show you guys those in a bit. So one of my secrets is to fishing a jig without a weed guard so that when that bass bites, I don't have to set the hook super hard. Now another thing is I fished jigs that have rattles in them. However, one of the problems is the rattle on the back makes it more bulky, easier to get snagged up on stuff, and just is, is not really very stealthy. So what I like to do is I buy these little glass rattles right here. Can you hear that? All right, and I'll insert them into the head that's sticking out. I'll insert them into the head like this and shove it inside. And I'll go right in the front. <clears throat> and I'll show you right where I put it. So I put it right here in the front. I insert it right here and then I'll shove it down to where it's sitting right here behind the hook so that it's inside of my bait and it's down here and it won't interfere with any of my hook set. So now you can't see it, All right? You can't tell it's there. And you can't see it and it won't interfere with any of the action but listen i got a rattling jig so stick around i've got some awesome other great tips and tricks to show you about the jig and then right before we go we're going to show you a little short clip of the biggest fish i've ever caught on a jig so stick around all right now we're going to talk about some trailers that some people may not know about or may not use. So check it out. First trailer we're going to start off with is Baby Brush Hog. I don't like, again, too much of the lure sticking out past the skirt and the hook. So the Baby Brush Hog is the perfect size. We're gonna put him on a jig right now and show you exactly what that looks like. Let's throw him on this one. Again, take the jig, hold it by the hook so that the skirt is upside down like that hold it you just have your hook and we're going to take it we're going to feed the lure up it just enough right at about there should be good bam oh come out right in the middle and check it out now you've got a baby brush hog jig eh? so for those of you who like throwing brush hogs baby brush hog may i present to you the baby brush hog jig great little lure there's not a lot of body there there's not a lot to interfere with the hook so you don't have a ton of rubber right here that basically what happens is if you have a ton of a, a big bait then you have less of a gap between here and here so you have less of the hook to stick into that fish what are you doing all right so for unknown or little known trailer number two how many of you guys like to fish a Cinco? So just take the Senko, remove about an inch and a half of it to where you have a Ned Rig, basically, or you can use a Ned Rig too. That's another little thing. But 
I would recommend against using the TRD because that will have chemical reactions with your jig and will destroy it. So what I would do is use a Yamamoto Cinco or a Zoom and then just rip it in half. All right. And then you have a jig Ned rig basically. This is a little super secret that I've been throwing for quite a while now. I don't tell nobody about, but uh, I throw it just like this. And it's kind of like throwing a Ned rig and a jig at the same time. So, and believe it or not, the fish will go nuts for this little guy. When it stands up, it's just like a Ned rig, but this jig ball poofs out. Oh, this looks killer underwater. I love it. So take a Cinco, rip it in half. Or take a Ned rig and away you go. Now this next trailer we're going to talk about, a lot of people actually know about it and use it. It's kind of old school. You don't have a lot of people using it anymore. But good old hula grub, Yamamoto hula grub. Same thing. Take your jig, hold it upside down. Feed that sucker right on through and up, and voila. Now you've got a Yamamoto jig grub. And one of the things about the this lure is the plastic from the hula grub kind of pops out and holds out the, the jig rubbers like a umbrella. So pretty cool little effect right here. And uh, it's got that perfect hula grub double tail movement. Oh, this is a killer right here. And again, no weed guard. If you're not fishing in woods, you're not fishing in weeds, why put that extra resistance between the hook and your fish? And it also allows you to fish this on slightly different gear. We'll get into that in a second. My last trailer modification tip before we show you guys a picture or video of a monster that I caught on Bumblebee Jigs um, is going to be something that a lot of people throw and use, but not on this setup, and I'll show you why. So a lot of people throw what's called a swim jig, and they'll put a fluke or a Kitek or a swim bait on the swim jig, right? Well, what I'll do is is I'll create the best of both worlds. See, again, I fish a lot of rocky lakes and and uh, that triangular head of a swim jig, like a bullet weight, tends to get lodged into the rocks a lot easier than this round head, this football head. Sorry, it's not a round head, football head. So this football head jig will not get snagged as easy as a swim jig. So I'll take a football head jig with a light skirt like this. And then I'll take a paddle tail swim bait and we'll use that as the trailer. And it's basically kind of like a Ned rig, the same setup. Like it, it, the idea is the, the bait is going to be looking like it's face down, like it's a uh, nose down into the bottom, like it's feeding. <clears throat> or trying to escape or hide and uh, when you jig it and move it the trick with this is you want this tail to have free movement you don't want the skirt to interfere with the paddle tail so this works out just perfect right about here so we have a little swim bait so I can take and I can swim this and I can kind of bounce it and move it along and it's like a little swim bait and a jig so instead of using a swim jig i'm using a football head and this guy will sit in the water resting kind of like a stand-up jig because it the way the the way the weight on these do they kind of sit like this so it'll sit like that and then drag along so excellent little trailers to use here and again on any one of these on any one of those trailers that I showed you guys 
it doesn't hurt to put a rattle in there if uh, that seems to be working or if you're not getting bit with it without a rattle put a rattle in if you got the rattle in and you're not getting bit take the rattle out so great little way to spice up your jig all right before we move on i'm going to show you one of my favorite uh jig trailers out there the baby d bomb is one of them and the rage tail ned bug is another so this is just an awesome epic lure right here or rubber sorry it's tiny it's small uh, the appendages have a lot of movement and flexibility in them so you can take them and break them loose from the body to create more movement and this one is just small enough where I don't need to remove anything. So we'll show you guys how we do this here in a second. So we take this again, hold the jig upside down. Put that right through the middle there. And then once you have it through the middle, go by feel. But make sure it stays in the middle, right? And then right about there, we're going to go ahead and poke it through. Feed it all the way up and pull it back down a little bit and voila, perfect. Look at this. So, perfect. Then you have that skirt. Drops down. Perfect sizing of everything. And these arms kick free. Another great trailer right here all right now i do fish jigs with weed guards i fish especially in the delta weed jigs or grass jigs i like to fish swim jigs especially in wood um, so i do like to use jigs with weed guards now uh, these guys here g money great jig company highly recommend them so they're great jig makers as well the ones that I showed you without the weed guard, those are Bi Zhang's jigs. You can reach him at Bi Zhang on Facebook. His jigs are called Bumblebee Jigs. So this G Money jig here is a quality made as well. Look at this beautiful brown, and I don't know if you could see those green sparkles in there. Brown skirt with some chartreuse and black. And then it's got just enough of a wood slash weed guard to give you a little protection. So you can fish this thing finesse through wood and through other material and not get snagged up as easy. So G Money, great jigs as well and uh, quality as well. So before we go, I want to show you guys one little quick tip about how to store them and how to up your chances of catching um, big fish and more fish. So check this out. All right, before we move on and I show you a monster double digit that I caught from Cast to Catch on Bijong's jigs, Bumblebee's jigs over there, I wanna talk really quick about how to fish a jig. And it's not that complicated. So if you're fishing in areas that has a lot of vegetation, weed and grass, you're gonna to wanna to use a weed or a grass jig. And that's gonna be like a triangular shaped head, kind of like a bullet, uh, a bullet weight so that that cuts through the weeds, grass and vegetation. And you wanna make sure that for sure has a weed guard on it. And when you're fishing in wood, the same kind of weed or grass uh, jig works uh, very well, as well as a swim jig, same type of head. It's kind of triangular shaped and it, and it smoothly will go over wood and won't catch very easy on it, uh, especially uh, when where the knot is tied. So if the knot is tied at the very end of that, then there's not a lot of room for anything to catch on the wood. So, um, you know, where the eye is at on the weight. And whenever you're fishing in rock and dirt, uh, open water and uh, mud and all that, but especially rock and boulders and things like that, you're gonna wanna use a football head or a round head jig. And basic way you're gonna fish a jig, a couple different ways. You can take it, cast it right up to shore and basically hop it on down with soft lifts of the rod tip 
and let the jig fall until it hits the bottom. Watch your slack when the jig has stopped. Reel that in slowly and then lift up slowly. You're just lifting up and then letting the jig fall again. Uh, another way is you can pop the jig with really hard pops and let the jig fly two, three, four, five, six feet up in the air and then fall straight down like a bullet and wait a second and then reel that slack in. You lift kind of slowly to make sure you don't have a fish in and then you pop it again. And you have these really big spikes, uh, kind of like how a lot of guys, a yo-yo, a blade bait or an LV500, you can create a reaction bite like that. And the last but not least, when you're fishing, especially in the winter and anytime it's cold and you get a cold front, and sometimes even in the other times of the year, you have to drag the jig. That means literally like a left to a right movement, not any hops, and you gotta let it fall down rocks and things, and then just simply crawl it along and move it very slow. And the jig bite is almost always a nice thump. You'll feel a, a real distinctive just thump. It ain't gonna usually be super hard and pull on you really hard. It may do that, but most of the time it's just a distinct thump like this. Just one bump as they pick the jig up. And then what'll happen is it'll either go thump and then slack if they bring the jig in towards you, or thump and then load up if they're going away from you. And remember, I fish jigs that don't have weed guards primarily. I do fish the Delta and areas with wood, so I always carry jigs with weed guards for that purpose. And so a couple of different uh, types of jigs as well, some swim jigs and uh, stuff like that. But most of my jigs are football head jigs, no weed guard for fishing lakes like McClure, Don Pedro, New Maloney's when it's medium to high level, uh, Berryessa, stuff like that. And uh, those kind of lakes, Shasta, uh, Orville, you know, places where you don't have a ton of trees and debris, even places like Clear Lake, I, I'll use that. Unless I'm fishing in a bunch of vegetation or along it or in grass, then I'll go with something else. So that's primarily how you use the jig, not a lot to it. Best stuff to use it on is anywhere from a 6'6 six, six medium, depending on the size jig you're using, 12 pound test up to about a 7.2 medium heavy with maybe 15 or 20 pound test. You use fluoro for sensitivity, use mono if you want a little forgiveness. If you're fishing in a uh, cover structure, you're probably gonna wanna use mono. Uh, sometimes when you're fishing those open hooks, you can use a little bit, uh, you can use mono if you want a little stretch and forgiveness because those hooks will penetrate right into the fish. And if you pull too hard, you can either snap your line or what I've had happen a lot of the times, you hook that fish, but you hook so hard that you create a giant gash. And then you have this half ounce jig that's inside this giant gash mark. And when that fish comes up and shakes, your jig can fly out easier because it's not a small hole that's penetrated. If you get anywhere in the soft part of the mouth and you don't actually puncture through the gristle, through the top of the mouth or through the nose or any of that stuff like that. If you don't go pop out where there's really tough cartilage and you get where the mouth if you get on the side of the mouth or when the bass opens up and it that's really where all that flex is at that soft membrane you'll tear gigantic holes in it and you'll lose a lot of your fish when they go to jump so with uh, open hook jigs like i do you either use a slightly less stiff of a rod uh, or you use a little mono goes a long way to give a little bit of stretch and forgiveness so not much to it you can pick your poison jig fishing can be done with flora or mono it just depends what you feel more comfortable with and also what circumstances you're fishing like are you fishing where your line could get frayed knocked around and banged up a lot well fluoro as soon as it gets scraped or abrasion it's real tough it'll snap real easy Mono has a lot more stretchability and forgiveness in that aspect, but it's also, it floats and it's a little less sensitive. So with, with fluoro, you're gonna be on those real subtle bites and those bites where they just barely pick it up and then kind of load up like a soft weight. So there's a time and a place for everything. So always remember that. Uh, so with that being said, let's get to the footage of a big old double digit. This is right before Horseshoe Bend. 
um, between Arnold Bay and Horseshoe Bend. A little point here with a bunch of nice big boulders on it. This is a great spot to throw some jigs, drop shot, um, a lot of different little bottom bouncing lures and a square bill up shallow. Great little spot here. <clears throat> That's a big one. Oh, it's going to jump. Oh my God, get the net. Get the net, it's a DD. Get the net, bro, please get the net. Oh my God, this is a DD. This is a DD, folks. You guys are witnessing a DD. Common sense fishing here. Oh, I hope I land this thing. Come on, do not bust me into those. Okay, Eli, here he goes for another jump. Oh my God, this is a team. This is a team. Oh my God. Oh my God! Don't! Got him, oh, got him! Got him. Got him. Got oh him. my God! Yeah, baby! Woo! Oh my God! Look at the mouth on this thing, guys! Look at this! Look at this! My whole hand can go in and out of this mouth. Oh my God! Look how it's hooked! Oh, you guys seen those jumps? Oh my God! That was such! Oh, he was! She was hooked so good, though. Take some video of me. Hold We're right here at Lake, oh, Lake McClure. My God, coming. We got we got fishing. Sam with his personal Ooh. best right here, uh, made personal this, best. Oh, this has got to be. Let's get it on the scale. What is it? What's in. today? We're here. I'm gonna uh, get her, Jan. In, the, I'm gonna get her in the live well. Hold on. She goes 10.8 and then back down to 10.6. So she's 10.6. All right, let's get her released on video. There you go. Let's go ahead and get that light. Let's get it down here. All right. <clears throat> Hold this light down, Mojo. Right here by the fish. <clears throat> we gotta make sure that she stays healthy. Look at that, folks. That's a McClure monster right there. Got you weighed your double digit like I knew you were. I wasn't sure if you were gonna go 11, 12, or what. I knew she was more than 10 though. My instinct said it. I would get called an eight pounder or a seven pounder all day. Yeah, she just swam away. That was awesome. Thank you guys. I really appreciate that.